Hi guys, welcome to my first ever live stream. Um, looks like the audio is working, so I'm going to get started. I don't really expect anyone to be watching this, but I figure um, you got to start somewhere with streaming and uh, what better way to practice than to just jump right into it. I didn't think, um, I thought there was a subscriber limit on when you could start live streaming, but apparently not. So I thought I'd take advantage of the opportunity and just start now. So today I wanted to tell you a little bit about how I got into the aquarium hobby and um, my favorite things about it, um, the parts of it that make me passionate about it the most, and a little bit about what I'm thinking of doing in the future. Um, and I hope if, uh, if you're either watching this video sometime in the future or if you're watching right now, feel free to share what inspired you to enter the aquarium hobby or what you love about the aquarium hobby and just sort of let's build a community of people that love aquariums. I mean, that community obviously already exists, but um, being able to communicate with it through YouTube would be a great way to just... Um, continue to spread that positive energy and uh, make everyone enjoy it even more. So I guess I'll just get into it. Um, so the first aquarium I ever had was a two and a half gallon tank with a goldfish in it when I was probably five years old. Um, obviously you don't remember that well when you're that young. So that's sort of a guess, um, sort of the classic thing uh, that people new to aquariums do. They put too large a fish and too small a tank. Uh, at this point in my life, I would never put a goldfish in that small a tank, but not knowing any better, that's what was done. And I think I kept that fish alive for probably four or five years. I was probably about 10 by the time it died. It, um, it actually jumped out of the tank and dried up on the floor while I was on vacation. Um, so that's how my first, first tank I can re really remember passed away. I do remember at some point having a goldfish in a bowl and then trying to buy another goldfish at a Petco and putting the two together and then them both dying. At the time, I thought, oh, the cause of this is goldfish carry disease so much, introducing another would wipe them out generally. But uh, knowing what I do now, I think um, even expecting one goldfish to survive in a little probably half-gallon bowl is ridiculous, and putting two in it probably just spiked the ammonia to a point where no type of fish could handle it. Um, but after I kept those goldfish um, for a birthday present, I think my parents got me a 10 gallon, an Aquion 10 gallon aquarium kit. One of the ones that comes with a power filter and a heater and pretty much everything you need to get set up. Um, so that's when my hobby sort of um, started in a more serious level, I guess, or that, that's the first time I kept tropical fish which is what I'm really passionate about now I I have respect for goldfish but um, my interests lie more in particularly fish from the Amazon and uh, this tank is where it started so I had a local store that I would go to um, and there was a worker there named Dave who um, at the time he didn't own the store but he essentially ran the store for the owner and he was my main person that I would go to for advice about fish I was completely new to it I pretty much knew nothing so he was a huge source of information for me at the time and I started out I believe by getting probably about three peppered Corydoras I believe that was the first tropical fish I ever kept um and I think the reasoning why I started with that was sort of to establish the cycle with the tank. Um, 
Corydoras would be a pretty hardy species that could do okay in a 10 gallon. And if I started with those, once I established the cycle, I could slowly introduce more fish. So I believe after I got the Corydoras, the next fish I got were black mollies. And um, that was sort of just the beginning of my hobby. Um, and then I was, I was relatively interested in the tank. I remember it was fun for me, but I don't think it was sort of the constant obsession that a lot of people feel with their aquariums where you get one, you want to get another, you want to keep buying new species. It was more just a little kid like, oh, that, that fish looks cool. It's fun to look at. Not, a uh, I don't know. I, I wasn't. Uh, fish weren't running through my brain constantly like I guess they do now. Um, but that kind of changed when I got some marbled mollies or Dalmatian mollies. I'm guessing probably a year or so later. Um, and after I would guess about three months of having them, I suddenly started to notice little babies showing up in the tank. And like I think it is for a lot of people, that was just game changing for me, realizing that my fish could reproduce in my tank and I probably never had to buy fish again if I didn't want to, or maybe I could sell them or do any number of things with them, uh, was just so cool to me. And um, from there, I just took much greater interest in it and I raised up probably. I don't know, 50 Dalmatian mollies sold. Well, I don't think I sold them back to the store. I think I just gave them back because at the time I was a little kid. I didn't really care about money, I guess, or it wasn't really something on my mind. But um, that's what really sparked a greater interest for me in fish. And then once I approached I remember the distinct time period change from when I was in third grade to fourth grade because I moved houses. So I know that um, around third grade, when I was getting ready to move, I got a little less interested in the aquarium, um, probably partly because I got my dog when I was in third grade. Um, and My dog Lambo is my profile picture. He's my best friend in the world. And uh, that that obviously is something that would distract you a little bit from your aquariums. So I started to, I think, kind of neglect the tank. Um, algae started to build up. I wasn't focusing on keeping it um, as stable or as healthy. And then after we moved, the tank got to a point where it was just covered in algae, um, not attractive at all. And uh, my dad basically told me, we're either throwing out the tank or you're going to make it look nice. And at that point, uh, a switch kind of flipped for me. I was like, well, I haven't, I haven't been paying that much attention to the fish for a while, but it, it was kind of like how people get burnt out in the hobby. I think I sort of realized, wait a second, this, this was something really fun. Why did I stop enjoying it? So I went online and I looked up a couple of videos on like how to start an aquarium or how to aquascape an aquarium. At that time, I didn't know the term aquascape, but I looked up like how to make your aquarium look nice or decorate it and like how to set up a 10 gallon aquarium. I probably watched a hundred videos of different people setting up 10 gallon aquariums and I just became without even keeping fish, I got even more obsessed with them. And eventually what I ended up doing was um, I pulled all the gravel out of the tank. I had been using uh, basically clown puke gravel. That's what uh, Corey from Aquarium Co-op, my favorite YouTube channel, calls it. It was like this white gravel with pink and teal um, pieces mixed into it and some black look completely artificial and now I view it as something that I would never put in my tank. I always want them to look as natural as possible. Um, so I replaced that with some black eco-complete aquarium substrate, um, which 
is still my favorite aquarium substrate. Um, and I used that because based on what I'd researched, it seemed like the best substrate to grow plants with. And I knew that I wanted to grow plants in my new tank based on watching these setups and what people, what people had success with and how nice they looked. So, so then, so I, I bought eco complete. I bought, um, a cichlid cave stone, which they're pretty popular. It's sort of like a, a rough white hollow stone with three holes in the sides. Um, I'm not sure if cichlid stone is the brand name, but they, they come in like three sizes, like one that's, uh, I can't, if I hold my hands too close, it was like this big and it had three holes in the sides. It was a white stone. I used that as one of the decorations. I think I also got a piece of driftwood. And then I got, let's see, what plants? I got cryptocorn, wendai, red, um, water wisteria, and I feel like there was a third plant, but I can't remember what it was. So I got those plants. And hmm, I'm trying to remember what the fish were. It's, ironically, I don't remember that well what fish I had at the time. I think I still had one of the peppered Coreys from the original group. Um, because Corydoras live a long time. And how badly had taken care of that tank, it lived through a lot too. So I had a peppered Cory. Probably I had a couple for Stella Tetras because I recall transitioning those into another tank even later. Um, I don't really recall what else I had. I don't think I had Dalmatian Mollies anymore. Um, I was just sort of in a restarting phase. I didn't have anything I was really breeding, I don't think. But after I reset the tank... It looked really nice. I think somewhere in my archives I have a picture of it, but I don't think I took direct pictures of it. They just show up in the background of family photos. Um, but I wish I'd taken pictures of it. I feel like it was the best tank I'd ever I've ever set up. Um, I just put a ton of time in it, and even though I was at a really young age, I've always kind of been, I guess, OCD or a perfectionist about how I do things and I made sure that it was like the best I could possibly make it for my current skill level and I was really happy with it for really years I think I had it up for probably two years and in that time I did see some Cory eggs show up on the glass but at the time I had no idea what they were that actually reminds me I had neon tetras because I thought the, the eggs were from the neons, but they were from the peppered corys. Um, so I learned a little bit from that. I didn't learn that much in my own tank necessarily, but I watched a ton of YouTube videos and um, just got really familiar with types of fish and uh, what I think really broaden for me at that point was being able to identify fish like going to a pet store and being able to walk past every tank and know the names of like oh that's a si siamese algae or that's a serpe tetra that's a dalmatian molly that's a you know just being able to identify every fish in a row without um hesitation um and that was really satisfying for me because um I'm sort of a specialist mentally. I like to master a few things and be known, I guess, for those as what I'm good at. Like, I like to focus on math, being very strong in math versus um, other school subjects. And um, I'm trying to think of other examples. Well, I mean, fish is the best example. I don't 
Uh, I don't have a lot of hobbies. I kind of have one hobby, and that's fish keeping. I do some fish keeping, some fishing, and some biking. Basically, all outdoor activities are activities related to nature, and I don't branch out a whole lot from there. So, um, in that time period, my tank was staying limited to that 10 gallon, but my knowledge was growing immensely because I, I was hooked on fish keeping. Um, and I'm really glad that I was. Um, so then my dad got me, surprised me with a 55 gallon aquarium kit for Christmas when I was probably in fifth or sixth grade. I think I'd probably had the tank set up for a year or two. Um, and that was massive. I mean, at that point, 10 gallons is the largest aquarium I'd ever had. And go from a 10 gallon aquarium to a 55 is like going from li living in a one bedroom apartment to a mansion. It was like, I, I couldn't even think of what I would put in it. It was, to me, it was like, I don't know, it was unbelievable. I was ecstatic. Um, so that tank actually didn't get set up for, I think, over a year. It sort of just sat while we waited for the, um, to decide where to put it and to build the stand for it and for me to decide what I wanted to put in it. Um, and that tank, I learned a lot of lessons from that tank because when I first set it up, my dad actually pulled another surprise on me and came home one day with like 30 fish. I think probably like 20 neon tetras, five harlequin rasboras, and five of some other fish I can't remember. Um, and as happens a lot with new fish keepers, I ran into problems with ick. Um, so I think probably a couple weeks into having those fish, they started to break out with ick. And at the time, I didn't know what it was. I just knew they had stuff on them and they were sick. Um, and I tried to help them, but I didn't. Per I don't think I purchased any med medication initially. Um, I thought it was just a problem with water quality or something. So. I think I changed some water and checked the filter and slowed down feeding because I was worried that I was overfeeding and fouling the water. At the time, I still had very little experience with dealing with fish illness or really keeping fish healthy in general. I, I think I'd kind of just been lucky to that point and not had many outbreaks of disease. So eventually, all the neons died. Um, I think most of the Harlequin Rasboras died. I think I probably had like two left. And I had a fairly large group of Corys at that point, and they actually all survived because Corydoras seem to be very resistant to um, damage from ick or probably a lot of illnesses just based on how. Um, they have armor-plated skin, and they just seem to be hardier fish in general than most tetras and a lot of other fish. Um, so after that, I became much more paranoid about illness, and I don't recall specifically what actions I took after that, but... Um, I did a lot more research on medicating fish, trying to make sure that that never happened again. And fortunately, since then, I think I've only had two fish die from ick in my entire time keeping fish. Um, so I just, I never buy a fish if there's any indication it might have any sort of ick. And the one time I brought in some cardinal tetras that did have it, I introduced ick x virtually immediately and I lost I think one or two of them but the rest 
were fine because ICAX is a great treatment. <laughs> and I caught it early, which is very important with pretty much all fish diseases. Um, so that was um, pretty depressing for me when I lost all those fish to ick, but it also taught me a very valuable lesson um, that I'm, gr I'm glad I learned early on to be very careful with fish disease and uh, try to avoid it at all costs because it can wipe out a tank very easily, which it did to me. Um, so after that, I don't recall um, when tanks entered the picture. I sort of got, got into that multiple tank syndrome people talk about where I started to get more tanks and once you get more than one tank, it gets sort of hard to keep track of when you had what. Um, but at some point, I got my aquaponic system, which um, my first few YouTube videos I ever created were on that. And in that, I was raising tilapia in the basement um, of my house while growing um, various vegetables in a grow bed. And... I learned quite a bit from that too, because in past videos, as you may have seen, if you've watched them or you could go look at it if you'd like, although I'd prefer you don't uh, go check out my extremely terrifying high pitched childish voice. Um, don't laugh at me. I'm glad my voice is lower now. Um, but breeding those tilapia, I'd continued to keep me interested in fish and sort of taught me a little bit more about egg laying fish um, because until that point the only fish I'd bred were Dalmatian mollies um, which are a live bearer um, and then somewhere along the line I got very interested in German blue rams um, don't know exactly how I came across them because I know that I think I just got very interested in them from watching YouTube videos because I didn't see them in person until long after I had been um, interested in getting them or just interested in seeing them. Um, so for a long time, I think over a year, I German blue rams were my favorite fish without ever keeping it. Um, I don't know what it was about them, but they just, they were so interesting to me and so beautiful. They're, I mean, I still think their color is amazing. There isn't really a tropical fish that can match them. Um, so then I ordered a pair of German blue rams online from a place called Unite SD Rams. It's a, it was a fish well, a German blue ram selling website that has since been closed down. I think they may have gone out of business. But I ordered a pair from them because I wanted to breed the rams. I'd watched some videos of people doing it on YouTube, and it looked really interesting to me. Um, I thought, I didn't think it would be easy. And the reason it had been over a year that I'd, been interested in them but not gotten them was actually because I was afraid I would kill them um, but eventually I bit the bullet and got them and put them in the 55 gallon and for a long time the background of my YouTube channel was a picture of that first male German blue ram that I had I've changed it since but um, I still have the picture and you might remember it if you've been following me for a while um, so I put them in the 55 gallon and, um, for a long time, I would just watch them constantly in the tank. Whenever you get a new fish, it's, um, it becomes slightly more interesting than everything else going on in your tank. And you, um, I think you just get heightened interest. So I, I was watching them very closely. And they started spawning occasionally in the tank and um, either cleaning off a stone, which I put slate stones in because I researched and knew that if you did that, they would likely spawn on them, which they did. 
Um, and sometimes they would dig pits in the gravel and also spawn in that. But I never got them to produce wigglers or fry. Um, I don't know if the the place I was getting the rams from had bad stock that um, for whatever reason didn't make good parents or if the water conditions weren't good enough or I was just getting unlucky. But I never got them to hatch. And I wasn't really interested in pulling the eggs to try artificially hatching because really I didn't want to breed them to sell or to raise fry necessarily. I just found it more interesting to watch their behavior while caring for the eggs. And I thought it'd be cool to see fish raise their babies like they would in the wild. Um, so I never got to see that with that pair of rams. Eventually, I think they they passed away. I think just of old age. Rams only live maybe three years in my experience. And I think it can be even shorter than that sometimes, especially if you keep them at high temperatures. Although I was only keeping them around 80. Um, but I also... At some point, I got a second pair of rams from the same uh, site, Unite SD Rams, and uh, they're documented in one or two YouTube videos that I posted a long time ago. And they also spawned a number of times, but I don't believe I ever got wigglers or fry from them either. Definitely not fry. It's possible I got some wigglers and was unsure if they actually were wigglers. Um, and then I guess eventually those passed away as well. And I sort of lost interest in the hobby kind of the same way that I had um, during that time when my original 10-gallon tank became very uh, dirty and neglected. Um, so then I think I sort of just stood pat with a tank of Cardinal Tetras, Ramino's Tetras, and some bronze Corridoras. Um, did that for a while. I didn't really try any more breeding. Um, and I don't know, I just kind of got bored. And then I think probably about two years later, that's a guess, it could be significantly off um there was a dollar per gallon sale at petco which um there's actually the, the dollar per gallon sale is going on right now at petco so if you're looking to get a new aquarium this is the time to do it you can get i think a 10 gallon a 20 gallon high a 20 gallon long um probably 15 gallons all for a dollar per gallon. And then they have significant, I think like 50% discounts on 40 breeders, 55s, and maybe a couple other sizes that I can't recall. Um, so if you're looking to get a tank, I would go to Petco now and try to cash in on that deal. So you're not going to find any better deal on tanks than the Petco dollar per gallon sale. Um, so at the time, uh, that I was referring to in the past, there was a dollar per gallon sale. And I got a 40 breeder aquarium because based on more research I did online, I realized surface area of the water in your aquarium is more important for stocking higher uh, loads of fish than gallonage. And a 50 gallon aquarium is really more like, or a 55 gallon aquarium is really more like 50 gallons, while a 40 breeder is actually more like 48. So very close in gallonage, but a 40 breeder is four and a half square feet of surface area because it's three feet by one and a half feet length and width, whereas a 55 is only four square feet because it's four feet by one foot. So um, it'd give me, let's see, one eighth more. So about 12% more surface area in a 40 breeder. So about 12% more fish capacity was my thinking. I didn't necessarily want to keep that many more fish, but I liked the idea that the tank could be smaller and 
have slightly more fish. Um, I don't know, for a long time, I just really wanted a 40 breeder and they had it for the dollar, dollar per gallon sale. So I got one. Um, and then similar to the 55, that aquarium didn't get set up, I think for maybe two years. I bought a Finex 24-7 light for it and slowly pieced together the parts, the heater, the filter, everything else, and set it up about, I guess it'd be about two and a half years ago. Um, and shortly after I set it up, got interested in German Blue Rams again, and I found a a local breeder who was selling them uh, and contacted him. And at that point I was breeding bristlenose Bucostomus in my 55. Um, we arranged a deal where I essentially traded him. I don't remember how many Bucostomus, but, I gave him like 30 albino bristlenose and he gave me six rams and I virtually got them for free. We essentially just traded the fish. Um, so those two trios, there, there were six rams, two males, four females. Um, they bred a lot and I, I tried a lot harder to hatch the eggs. I tried some artificial hatching with methylene blue a couple other methods and i did successfully breed them um so all the rams that you see in my videos now are descendants of those rams that i originally got from that breeder um all of the original rams have since passed away um i think just of old age but um i haven't needed to buy any more rams because I've been able to breed them pretty successfully and at home now I probably have 15 from the second generation from those parents and probably close to 30 that are grandchildren well fish grandchildren of the original rams that I purchased from that breeder um so that pretty much brings you up to now um Rams are the main species I've focused on keeping for most of my, I'd say, more advanced fish keeping career. But um, as I mentioned in the past, I watch a lot of videos and do a lot of research. Um, and there are a lot of fish that I think I know quite a bit about without ever having kept them myself, just from watching a lot of videos and reading about uh, just a lot of general things about aquariums. Um, so one of the best resources that I've ever found on fish keeping that I wanted to share is this book. Let's see. This book, it's called The Encyclopedia of Freshwater Tropical Fishes expanded edition um it was written by herbert axelrod who the cardinal tetra is named after parachyridon axelrod i um and it's i've read a number of different fish encyclopedias and it is by far the best one i've ever found um in the past, I mainly used it as a reference for specific fish when I'm trying to breed them or keep them. But currently, I'm trying to read through the entire book. I'm on page 310 of one thousand three hundred. Um, so. You can't tell from that it's a pretty extensive book it's pretty detailed and uh there are a lot of fish species covered in it um so if you're looking for a book that brings you up to speed on most of the fish that you'll find in the aquarium hobby i highly recommend this book 
I'm sorry, the lighting's really bad, but there, oh, there, you can kind of see it. Great book. So, now, I don't know, German blue rams are my biggest uh, passion in the aquarium hobby thus far. Um, but now I'm trying to get a little more into breeding for profit. Um, so I've watched the Aquarium Co-op Breeding for Profit series probably 10 times over. And um, I don't know. I don't necessarily have a huge desire to make a lot of money. But um, the idea of um, setting up a tank in a way so that you're producing and um, sort of creating a net positive gain for yourself from a tank that's also enjoyable to keep is something very appealing to me. So um, you'll probably see in some future videos I'm setting up a tank at my local fish store to try to breed some fish for profit. Um, and I'll try to bring you some updates on how that goes. Um, I don't have any German blue rams with me anymore. They're, they're all at home. And I'm in Washington, so my, my brother and dad are taking care of them for me. Um, I was considering bringing some here, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. I think German blue rams could be a fish you could breed for profit, but um, the babies do take a while to grow out. And um, in my current living situation, I'm only going to be staying here for probably another nine months or so. Um, I think. In that short a span of time, I'd be better suited to um, trying to breed a live bear for profit because I'll be able to grow out more fish faster to um, actually make some money before I have to leave for college. Um, so that's sort of where my hobby's going. Um, I would ask how uh, viewers' hobbies are going, but we have zero viewers right now. so see this video in the future let me know how your hobby's going how it started um and i don't know what you tell me what you're passionate about tell me what you'd like to see uh from my channel um i don't know i guess i guess my goal with this channel is to try to make as many people successful in this hobby as possible and try to bring as many new people into it as possible because i think a lot of people don't realize um, how rewarding keeping fish can be. Um, I think until you have that um, sudden, like that sudden moment where you realize your fish reproduced in your tank, or that moment when you see, for me, when you see a German blue ram and you're just awestruck with how beautiful it is. Um, it's sort of hard for people to understand until they have their own. So I'm hoping that with this channel and through the community we build with it, um, we can help people um, keep their fish as healthy as possible, have as much fun keeping fish as possible, and grow the community as much as possible. So um, I hope you all can help me with that. and. I hope you enjoyed watching today. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.